this is your first time on my channel, welcome. My name is Celeste and I'm a wife and an entrepreneur, thus a wifepreneur. And on my channel, I love to talk about ways that my family saves money because as an entrepreneur, every penny counts when you're, when you're starting a business, as well as my online teaching journey and my Etsy business and also what I love to sew. So if that is something that you are interested in, I hope that you will subscribe and click that notification bell so we can keep in touch. But first, let's get through what has been happening. 2021, I thought, ooh, 2020, hindsight, we are done with it. This is gonna be a brand new year for me and for the world, kind of a restart moment. And then February came, and my life kind of took a little detour. So not, you know, completely bad, just things you're not expecting. And um, my mother lives in Texas. And February, if you kept up with the news, you know that Texas was under a complete ice storm. A lot of people call it ice Mageddon, uh, where she was stuck at home for about a week and a half and during that time, a lot of things happened. She fell at home and it took a while for her to get to the phone to call 911 and for 911 to send uh, the fire uh, medics out to help lift her back in her chair. Um, she had stopped eating because she was too cold to get out uh, of the chair to make her some food. There were rolling power outages, which mean that she had heat uh, for limited periods of time. Um, she was running out of water and just it kept layering. And I would call her at least three or four times every day just to check on her. And every night she would say, Celeste, please come, please come get me. And that was the most gut-wrenching cry for help uh, when you want to be there to help her, but you can't get there because from where I live to where she lives, it was a complete ice <clears throat> on the roads as well as all the airports were shut down. So I'd have to say, mom, I can't get to you. I can't get to you. As soon as I can get to you, I will get to you. I was there. I really had the heart to heart talk and say, mom, you know, we've tried this, you know, three years, three years ago when you broke your hip, um, you were doing well after you came to stay near me and I brought you back thinking things would go well. And I think you just need to be closer to my husband and me. And so um, we have brought her here, but that took a while during that 10 weeks uh, to get all those doctor's appointments accomplished uh, so that we could get her here and started with that continued health process. But while I was out there, my mother was an avid sewer. In fact, all of my clothes growing up were made by my mom. In fact, that's how we could afford clothes because we were so financially strapped with what my dad did. Uh, that and hand-me-downs were how I had clothes growing up. And uh, she was an excellent seamstress, but she has not sewn in 10 years. So while I was there, I went through some, just some, she has four closets full of fabric. We could open up our own store. <laughs> so I went through the fabric that I knew that I would never use and I don't think she'll get back to sewing um, she hasn't sewn in 10 years so I, I don't think that will become reality I mean I hope that she does but I just don't think that's gonna happen so we went and donated a bunch I found a bunch of fleece and I made those into fleece blankets and I found a group and I'll link that below because they are in all 50 states uh, Project Linus and they have different drop-off points for different states and different cities and you can donate fleece blankets and they will give them to children that are having to be removed and put into foster care and as well as to children's hospitals and so I made seven blankets while I was there I mean I probably could have made a lot more but again I was caring for her I was cooking trying to get her house back in order taking care of her dog, as well as taking her to doctor's appointments and then still trying to teach online. So I had a lot of things going. Um, so seven blankets was a great accomplishment. Um, I also brought a lot of her fabric with me on projects that I knew that I could uh, use them for. And um, I found a bunch of her patterns and a lot of patterns I either would donate them 
or I sold them on eBay, but one particular pattern she did not want me to get rid of, and it was um, a pattern that's no longer in print, at least I can't find it. It's McCall's 6468, and she liked all of the views, but I made her view C, and I'm gonna show that picture here. Um, made out of the fabric that she um, had already in her stash. Uh, she has worn it many times here in her new living situation, and she has gotten a lot of compliments, which makes me feel good because I have not sewn clothing, gee, in probably 20 years. I've kind of moved to the craft and purse type of thing, quilts, um, so that made me really pleased that um, I was able to get back into that groove. It took me a little while, that's why it took me a long time to make this, as well as I had to learn her machine and find all of the supplies, the cutting supplies and thread, you know, where did she put them in her house um, type of thing. And so uh, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I mean, are there things that could have been improved? Yes, but for me to get back in after being gone for so long, as far as sewing clothing, I was pleased with the outcome. So that's what I was working on as well. Um, in addition, now that we are back in Tennessee where I live, I had made this purse for her in 2020 for Mother's Day. I couldn't be there for Mother's Day. She couldn't be here. And she um, used it so much. I mean, she stuffed it, stuffed it full of stuff to take everywhere. It was her bag and her purse that um, she had too much weight in it and so the straps came off. So I've recently reattached these to her purse and this is from the pattern that I was trying to sell on eBay but I'm glad that I didn't and I'll tell you why in a minute. But it's the Bunny Hill Designs Jelly Roll pattern and I have made myself two purses from this. I made her one and back in October of 2020, some friends of my husband's came up and met us in Gatlinburg for dinner, and she complimented me on my purse that I had for fall. And uh, just so I did a little bit of investigative work, you know, like what kind of prints do you like? And she's really into animal prints. And I will have to tell you that at the time that I was looking, animal print jelly rolls were very hard to find, and especially in what I thought she might like but I finally found it, and I'll link it below if I can remember what it is. And this is where I am. This is a work in progress. So I have completed the actual purse construction. Um, the lining is what I already had at my home for another project that I was gonna do, but I can't remember what it was. So it became her purse lining. And then um, the buttons are from Joann's. I have these little wooden buttons, and I think they really look nice on this purse. So I've got this part done um, and I have finished the construction of the straps. I've done the top stitching to it, which I like how that does. Um, it's a reversible strap, strap, let me enunciate, strap. And so that's all I have left to do is to attach them like I did here and add the little knot to it and then I can mail it to her. Uh, she does not know that I'm making this, so it'll be a surprise to her, so I hope that she really likes it. So that's what I've been doing and sewing. I've also been really working on my Etsy store and I've been adding new port pillows to them. And what I've done is I had some scraps of fabric from quilts and so I just put those together and made my own fabric and then cut the fabric to the size that I needed for port pillows and if you're not familiar with port pillows what it is is uh, since both of my parents have had cancer um, they had a port inserted and it just makes the administration of the chemo drugs um, when they go for their infusions much easier they're not blowing out veins it's just really uh, makes it a little easier to go through that very difficult process. But a side effect of that is that when you get into a car, the seatbelt hits right where that port is and rubs. So many times people will put the strap of the seatbelt behind them, which makes the seatbelt ineffective to help prevent uh, really bad injuries if you were in a car accident. So I've made these seat pillows 
support pillows. And so they just attach by removing this loop and hook. And so you put the seat belt here and then you attach these and then you can adjust it where you want. And it just really makes being in a car, whether you're the driver or the passenger, much more comfortable. And so I have those in my Etsy store, which I'll link below, but I've also uh, made some for our local infusion center and uh, just as free gifts for anybody that might need it. And then unfortunately, a few of my college friends have recently been diagnosed with cancer and are down at MD Anderson in Houston. And so I have mailed them some pillows as just a little a gift for them to hope that you know life is a little easier where it can be easier for them. And last week I received a really sweet note from one of my friends and um, he just said how much he appreciated that and that hopefully based on what his doctors were saying, he will not need to go through chemotherapy much longer. So yay, uh, hopefully um, we're just praying for a good full recovery and be cancer free very soon for him. So that's kind of what I've been doing sewing wise. Um, I wanted to update you on a project that I kind of really started last year. And if you followed my Instagram account, uh, you knew that I was experimenting with an idea that I had, but I wasn't sure how it was gonna turn out. So I really wanted to make reusable cosmetic pads. And so um, as I was cutting out uh, some t-shirts for a t-shirt quilt that I wanted to make, I have huge bins of t-shirts. When I was in children's ministry, as a children's minister for 30 years, I have every vacation Bible school t-shirt, every children's camp t-shirt, so I'm gonna make that into one quilt. And then I have all my college t-shirts from the different groups that I was involved in, and I'm make that into a second quilt. So my goal this year, before my life took a detour, was to cut out at least one or two of those t-shirts and begin putting the interfacing on the back of it. Um, I got one done. That's one more than I had, so that's progress. But one of the t-shirts was really thick from the 1990s when t-shirts used to be really thick, uh, really good quality. And I thought, oh, maybe I could use those for my cosmetic pads. So I used some of my fat quarters here, and this is just a prototype. And I experimented by using um, one circle of the t-shirt, and I thought that's not really thick enough, so I put two circles of the t-shirt and then I serge the edges here. Um, now this has been used. Um, it's a little big for my container, number one. And number two, it's not as soft as I was wanting as I'm using it to remove my makeup. So good in theory, bad in actuality. So I personally believe my mother was close to death. And so as soon as it cleared out for a couple days and I knew that I could get there, I took the first flight out and got to her and we spent, I spent 10 weeks in Texas caring for her, uh, trying to get her healthy, get nutrition in her first and foremost, getting her to doctors, getting her COVID shot, um, getting home health care to do physical therapy. She stage four her kidney disease, trying to get that started. I mean, just the list went on and on. And then um, while I was there, I really had the heart to heart talk and say, mom, you know, we've tried this, you know, three years, three years ago when you broke your hip, um, you were doing well after you came to stay near me and I brought you back thinking things would go well. And I think you just need to be closer to my husband and me. And so um, we have brought her here, but that took a while during that 10 weeks uh, to get all those doctor's appointments accomplished uh, so that we could get her here and started with that continued health process. But while I was out there, my mother was an avid sewer. In fact, all of my clothes growing up were made by my mom. In fact, that's how we could afford clothes because we were so financially strapped with what my dad did. Uh, that and hand-me-downs were how I had clothes growing up. And uh, she was an excellent seamstress, but she has not sewn in 10 years. So while I was there, I went through some, just some. She has four closets full of fabric. We could open up our own store. <laughs> so I went through the fabric that I knew that 
I would never use, and I don't think she'll get back to sewing. Um, she hasn't sewn in 10 years, so I, I don't think that will become reality. I mean, I hope that she does, but I just don't think that's gonna happen. So we went and donated a bunch. I found a bunch of fleece, and I made those into fleece blankets, and I found a group, and I'll link that below because they are in all 50 states. Uh, Project Linus and they have different drop-off points for different states and different cities and you can donate fleece blankets and they will give them to children that are having to be removed and put into foster care and as well as to children's hospitals and so I made seven blankets while I was there I mean I probably could have made a lot more but again I was caring for her I was cooking trying to get her house back in order taking care of her dog, as well as taking her to doctor's appointments and then still trying to teach online. So I had a lot of things going. Um, so seven blankets was a great accomplishment. Um, I also brought a lot of her fabric with me on projects that I knew that I could uh, use them for. And um, I found a bunch of her patterns and a lot of patterns I either would donate them or I sold them on eBay, but one particular pattern she did not want me to get rid of, and it was um, a pattern that's no longer in print, at least I can't find it. It's McCall's 6468, and she liked all the views, but I made her view C, and I'm gonna show that picture here. Um, made out of the fabric that she um, had already in her stash. Uh, she has worn it many times here in her new living situation, and she has gotten a lot of compliments, which makes me feel good because I have not sewn clothing, gee, in probably 20 years. I've kind of moved to the craft and purse type of thing, quilts, um, so that made me really pleased that um, I was able to get back into that groove. It took me a little while, that's why it took me a long time to make this, as well as I had to learn her machine and find all of the supplies, the cutting supplies and thread. Every year is a tradition for my nephews and nieces, I make them pillowcases. And so usually in July of every year, I look for new fabric based on themes that um, they're interested in. It's getting harder because my oldest nephew is 14 and he's in high school. He had too cool for school. And the youngest niece uh, just started her fifth grade year. So it's getting a little bit more difficult to find things uh, that they are interested in. But I did find two pieces for my nephews. Um, I found uh, some lacrosse fabric. My oldest nephew is really into lacrosse, an excellent lacrosse player. Uh, looking maybe to play for a, a team in college. And so um, there's not a lot of different choices. Last year I got him some, but I found some on Amazon. Um, and I'm really pleased with that. I will leave the link below, but it's a good kind of manly color here. So I'll be making that into his Pella case. And my youngest nephew, who is in eighth grade, uh, loves video games, everything video games. And I really wanted to find kind of a guy video game kind of look um, and all I was seeing was the repeat fabric that I chose from him last year but while we were in Joann's looking for something completely different I found this next to the cutting area they already had pre-cut fabrics and so I think it's a great print for a guy I haven't decided what the cuff and the topper will be on that but um, I think he's going to really like it. It's two yards. I don't need two yards of it, but I'm sure that I'll think of something else to use uh, with the remainder of the fabric. So that's what I've been doing in sewing. Um, I have some other projects, and I will show you that in our future video, but I would love to see what you've been working on. You can catch me on Instagram or Facebook. I'll link those down below. Love to be encouraged by what you're doing. Kind of motivates me to keep the sewing mojo going and so I hope that you're having great a great time that you're staying healthy and your family staying healthy healthy <laughs> yeah I need to learn how to speak I guess but uh, I'll be sharing more videos about what I've been sewing because I've started some more garment construction so until next time happy sewing <laughs>